Very often you want your records to be numbered in a certain way. We did that mostly with formulas. All the gray cells have formulas in it. So in this case, for instance, we just numbered from one through as far as you want to go, but with formulas. In this case, we put leading zeros in front of it. In that case, we started a different number. Then we want to do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 1 through 7, 1 through 7 for weeks. Or you want to do that in repetition. 1, 1, 1, 1, let's say week 1, week 2, 5 days, week 3, etc. You only want it at the beginning of those numbers, or you want to do it with characters A through Z and A through Z or A through F, whatever you choose. All can be done with formulas. Uh, in general, it's good to know the following function, the row function, equals row. If I don't put any reference inside the parentheses, then it takes the row number of the cell we are in, which is in row 3. If you want to start at 1 or whatever number, you have to use the row function, but with an argument. You take a reference to a cell that happens to be in row 1, which can be e, A1 or B1 or C1, whatever you prefer, and it will automatically go up. In this case, it will also go up because you copy it to a row that is one farther down. So how can we do all of that? The simplest thing to do is type a word and then a number and when you copy it down the machine will automatically detect that number and you do that in the right lower corner and it will automatically take two, three, four. If you have a certain list that you want to repeat, the easiest thing to do is type that list one time, go to the fill handle in the right lower corner, and in this case I can double click it down so it goes to the farthest down cell, which happens to be in this case in row 102. Same story here. If I type 1, and I copy it down, it keeps repeating that one. But don't panic, you just go to at the bottom to that little blue box there, and you have options. Fill the series, then it's going to D1, etc. To do it with a formula would be much easier probably, equals row A1. Don't do a row and no arguments, for it will take row 3. So now when I copy that down, it will have all of that there. If you want a leading zero, you could use the write function. Write. Take the right part of three zeros, for instance, leading zeros, space, ampersand, space, row A1, comma three, take the right three characters, or four characters or five characters, but then you need more zeros here, of course. So you can adjust this completely to your needs. The next one starts much farther. It starts at 1001. So we use the argument in row A1, A1001 or F1001, it doesn't really matter. Copy the formula down, and you get beautifully numbered records. If you want to have one, 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 five times, and then two, 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 you use the row function again, but you also use the modulo function. The modulo takes the remainder after you divide by, in this case, five, so we take the row number minus 1, divide it by 5, take the remainder of it, and add plus 1. It's the same one that we had first subtracted from row A1. And we copy that down, and you get beautiful numbered 1 through 5, 1 through 5. Then we use the quotient function. 
In older versions of Excel, Quotient was not available. On a regular basis, you had to install the tool pack. So if you have an older version, install the tool pack through File, Options, and then use Add In. Okay. The Analysis Tool Pack. I'm cancelling that. So I use the, the Quotient function. So the quotient function does the following. It returns the integer portion of a division. If you tell me what the numerator is, row number of A1 minus 1, the denominator 5, it's a divisor, and we get the result 0. So we add plus 1. Copy it downwards. The next one is a little more complicated because we don't want to show it on row 2, 3, 4, 5 and then again show it. So we use the quotient function again, the same as before, but we put it inside an if function. If the remainder of the row number minus 1 divided by 5 equals 0, then we want that number, otherwise we want nothing double quotes, double quotes, and it will do all of that. And finally, a little more complicated one, if you want characters, A through Z, there is a character function, and that gives you the character that comes with a certain ASCII number. 96 is an A, 97 is a B, etc. So you start with 96, and then you add the modulo function divided by 26, for we have 26 characters in our alphabet, and add plus 1. And it does the perfect job. After the Z, it starts at A, B, C again. It's clear if you want only A through E, you replace 26 by 5, etc. So what we have now in the background is a series of formulas. I did this with control tilde, the tilde is under the escape key, that allows you to see all the formulas. So it is clear that if you ever use this for real records and you have those numbers given, if you ever sort those records, these formulas will go to a different position and will adjust. You don't want that. So what you really want to do if these numbers are final, you select that column, copy and paste the value. If you really want the end results. So in this case what you would do is you would select that range, copy it, and then pay special. say I want the values that we have there. So then they will never adjust anymore when we sort the records. It's beautiful if you know all these formulas and you can use them diligently for your purposes. You, you probably want to know more about Excel. The CD-ROM Excel 2007 expert also works for 2010, 2013, though the interface is a little different. You can find all these issues on that CD-ROM, more than 1500 slides with questions for feedback and you find them at genesisbc.com. If you are very involved with scientific issues, you probably want to know that there is also a book and a CD-ROM for speci specifically for scientists, 2013. genesisbc.com